Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We will get started in just one minute, but while you're waiting, feel free to type in the chat where you're tuning in from. I am virtually, I mean, as you can see, I'd like to be on UMD's campus, but I am virtually at home in Washington, DC. Okay, awesome. Amanda, you are too. A couple of people, DC, welcome. John's in New Jersey, welcome, welcome. Crofton, Maryland, fabulous. Okay, we got some Maryland folks. Boston, Long Island, wonderful. Cumberland, Maryland, great. Great. And if you're just connecting your audio and you haven't seen in the chat, folks are just typing in where they're tuning in from today. I'd like to see where Terps are joining us from. Laurel, thanks for joining us. Danielle. California. Good morning to you. College Park, New York, lovely, lovely. Okay, well, folks are gonna keep joining us and feel free to um, keep putting in the chat where you're tuning in from. It's always nice to see, but I'm gonna get started. Um, good afternoon and good morning to those on the West Coast. My name is Ellie Garrity and I'm the Director of Alumni Career Programs for the University of Maryland Alumni Association. I'm so excited that you're able to join us for today's webinar, Re-Entering the Job Search with Confidence with Lauren Lefkowitz. This webinar is presented in partnership with the Coaches Corner Program, the UMD Alumni Association's newest professional development resource accessible to all Terps. We have a lot of information to cover today, but we will be taking questions, so feel free to submit any of these questions you have through the chat function on your Zoom panel. This webinar is also being recorded, so by participating, you acknowledge and consent to your image, likeness, or voice being recorded. Speaking of recording, a recording and slides from today's webinar will be available and shared with you following the session. And you may also access our closed captioning feature by clicking the CC button on your Zoom panel. Okay, now a little bit about our speaker today. Lauren Lefkowitz is an executive leadership coach who partners with executives and rising executives to elevate or change their careers. Her clients build leadership skills, create better work habits, develop boundaries, learn to ask for support and find better balance and integration of work and life, which is huge. Lauren also works with small and medium leadership teams to build collaboration, trust, effectiveness, and balance. She has over 20 years of experience in human resources, coaching, and consulting, and has in turn led several corporate functions. She's a certified ontological coach and an ICF certified coach. She has been where you are in a C-suite role working 80 plus hours a week, giving everything she has to her job, sacrificing her personal life to make work the top priority, and has luckily come out on the other side with more balance, purpose, and fun in her life. All right, Lauren, I will pass it right off to you to get things started. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Ellie. I'm so glad to be here. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, Ellie, I'm going to ask you to keep an eye on the chat and interrupt me at any time if there's a relevant question or comment um, so that I can focus on everybody here in the room. Um, so today we're talking about re-entering the job search with confidence. So it's sort of the search before the search, right? We get to this point in our careers where we're ready for another search for whatever reason. And, um, and we kind of blank out no matter what our level is, no matter how many years of experience we have, we, we sort of, you know, look at this blank screen in front of us and think like, what do I do for a living? How do I even know what I do for a living? How do I know that that's valuable somewhere else? So we're going to talk about the search before the search today. Um, I, uh, can you still hear me? My speaker just went wonky. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yep. I can hear you. Okay, thanks. So let's talk about what today is about. Um, first, 
who the pepperoni pizza am I to be talking about this? Um, uh, I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm going to tell you who I think you might be. Um, and I'll give you an opportunity to tell me who you are also. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what happens when you think about your job search. And um, then we're going to talk about how to prepare to prepare to job search. As we go along, comments are welcome, questions are welcome, and please put your LinkedIn profile into the chat so that you all can connect with each other and start building community with each other, and so you can connect with me. My default button on LinkedIn is follow, but I'd really prefer that you connect, so feel free to connect to me um, as we're going along. All right, so who am I? This is me on the one side. I'm the one without the fur and the big ears. And um, I am, uh, Ellie gave you my bio, um, but my my real story, my big story is that I'm a recovering workaholic, people pleaser, perfectionist, um, who spent a lot of years in a job I loved in HR and operations. I got to interim manage a bunch of different departments. So I learned a ton about how business works um, and I was in HR for 20 years and I loved HR for about 15 years. And uh, those last five years were a struggle because I was still working all the hours. I didn't know who I was. I just knew what I did for a living. And so through some really deep soul searching um, and some, some uh signs from the universe that uh, were very literal, like the time when I broke both of my shoulders chasing a vacuum and literally lost the ability to raise my hand and say, I'll do it for everything that came up. Um, uh, I did the work for myself and I worked with coaches and um, and with myself and, and figured out who I am and who I wanted to be when I grew up. And what I realized is that I am a person who is a lot of things. My career is super important to me and that's A-OK -okay with me. I'm super glad that my career is really important to me. And that's where my drive comes from is how can I impact people through my career? But I'm also a friend and a family member and I have hobbies and I have time to rest and I live with chronic illness and uh, I'm a dog mom. <laughs> this is my boss on the other side of the screen, puppy. She's 14 years old. Uh, you can see she does things her own way. That's a dog bed that she has contorted into a position that is comfortable for her. And um, she runs the show. I just work here. So that's a little bit about me. Um, who you might be. Uh, these are the people that I typically talk to. These are the people who usually come to the conversations that I'm having. You are probably pretty smart, pretty successful, pretty hardworking. Maybe you can take the word pretty out of all of those things and just be smart, successful, and hardworking. You've been at the job for X years, and X can feel long for any of us, right? You can feel like you just got to this job a year ago. It's not the right fit. It's not the right place for you. You know it's time to do something different, but you don't know what it is because you just got to this job. Or all the way at the other end of the spectrum, 20, 30 years in jobs or in the same job. But you just know right now it doesn't feel good anymore. This is not where you want to be. This is not the life that you want to be living. You may look at the blinking cursor on your blank or your very old resume and have no idea where to start. Because when we look at ourselves, it's very difficult to identify what we're good at. Um, you know you're good at things. Uh, which is the tricky part, right? You go to work every day, you're successful, you're doing all of the things. Uh, people compliment you on your work. Maybe you've gotten promoted, you've gotten recognition, you've gotten more money. So you know you're good at things. You just can't think of what those things are when you look at job postings. Um, you, you may actually already be in a place where you're looking for jobs and you just feel super overwhelmed and you just kind of want to give up on it. You just kind of want to say like, I'll just stay here. It's easier to stay here. I've been in that position where it's just easier to stay where you are because it's what you know. Maybe you're a person who would like to crawl under your desk, George Costanza style. <laughs>
lunch. <laughs> and then just go to lunch. <laughs> but you also know that that's not what you want. You want to feel good about walking into your office, your work, whatever, whatever it is that you do for a living, you're spending a lot of time and energy on it. You want it to feel good. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to um, open a whiteboard and ask you to type in the whiteboard, what scares you about the thought of job searching? Now, if you're on an iPad or a laptop, you will be able to use the whiteboard. There's uh, text boxes and drawing on the left side. Um, if you're on an iPhone, just go ahead and type in the comments. Um, what scares you about the thought of job searching? And you can all be typing at once. If you're having trouble writing, feel free to put it in the comments. If you um, uh, click on the T on the left side of your screen, that should give you a text box to type into. Uh, drawing, I'm a terrible at drawing on the whiteboard. I'm uh, I'm super sloppy. I need the whole whiteboard to put one giant word. Cool. Thanks to everyone who's doing that so far. And if you are having trouble with the whiteboard, go ahead and put it in the chat. You can have the same concerns as someone else. Type them in anyway. Lauren, it's Ellie. We have a few coming in through the chat. So you just let me know when you want me to read them out loud for you, okay? Yeah, cool. Thanks. Let's just give everyone another 30 seconds. Awesome, thanks for uh, your vulnerability, everyone. Thanks for sharing stuff that everybody else is nodding at as you're sharing it. Amazing. All right. If you've got stuff to add, go ahead and add it on the whiteboard or in the chat. I'm going to read out what's what I'm seeing in the whiteboard. Um, and then Ellie, when I'm, I'm done, I'll ask you to read out what's in the chat. Great. I'm seeing uh, I'm comfortable in the role I'm in now. Change is scary. Imposter syndrome. Absolutely good at what I do. Uh, inadequate skills being undervalued. Worrying about a new role taking up more hours. Work-life balance is important. Um, good as an individual contributor. Okay, so maybe some concerns about what next level might look like. Wasting time on unattainable jobs. Making a move that doesn't work out. Stress of learning a new job. Uh, out of practice. Yeah, fear of the unknown. Um, imposter syndrome. I won't find something better. Um, how to appropriately articulate transferable skills, properly sharing my skills on my resume after all these years, rejection, unknown, and another being undervalued, finding a good fit, out of practice, starting over, having a job uh, that seems, um, not sure where that one was heading. Um, uh, yeah, so we've quite a few. Um, and, uh, and I, I know I'm going to ask Ellie to, <laughs> to come into the chat, but before I do, I, I just want like, uh, yeah, or a hell yeah, or a heck yeah. If you relate to some of these in the chat. Mm 
<laughs> I'm not sure if you can see, but we got an all caps. Yes, we got some. Yeah, I can see all <laughs> yes, yeses and heck yes. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, Ellie, would you mind um, jumping back to the comments that came in through the chat? Sure. Yeah, there's a lot of great ones in here. We have um, fear of going backwards uncertainty of having the right skills as a new hire, fear of the unknown, which I think we've seen, finding yeah. something that doesn't work out and having to change jobs, feeling not qualified for other jobs. Um, do I even have what employers are looking for? Um, fear of not knowing what I want or not knowing what other jobs are out there. Or, um, Max said pigeonholed into one type of position after eight years at the same company. That's tough. Um, and then the last one is identifying strengths and transferable skills in a meaningful way. Yeah. Yeah. Can we get some more yeses, yeps, and hell yes for those? <laughs> yeah. So congratulations, everyone. You're so normal. <laughs> and I'm glad you're here because this is the place to be in community with people who are also struggling with this, right? You're not alone. I feel a lot of these things too. I've, you know, I work with clients on a lot of this stuff. Um, so I'm going to close this whiteboard and come back into the presentation. And we're going to talk a little bit about this. Why does this happen? Why do we feel like we can't be more, we can't change jobs, we can't uh, find the right job, the right job, or the thing we think is the right job is going to sort of screw us over. Um, the job market feels daunting and terrible and ugly. And so we just want to retreat. We think maybe we're not qualified. Maybe there are some external factors that are gonna hinder us. Um, but before we even head to those external factors of the job applications are horrendous, which they are. And there are so many jobs and so many people and I can get lost in the, in the shuffle, which sure, that's all part of the job search part. But there's a lot that happens before the job search. And I'm gonna tell you the secret. Are you ready for the secret? Monsters. Monsters is the secret. You have monsters. I have monsters. We all have monsters. Some people call that imposter syndrome. Some people call that saboteurs. Some people call that your inner critic. They're all different names for it. You may have heard all these in any of the self-help or business books that you've read or the how to get ahead, leadership books, all kinds of different terms. I call them monsters. Your monsters come in different colors. They come in different shapes and heights and sizes. Some of you who are more visual people may be able to actually picture your internal monsters. You may be actually able to identify them and call them by name, um, but you don't not have them. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> and so let's talk about what your monsters do to you. They make you feel like you can't. They make you feel like you're not qualified. They make you feel stupid. They make you feel small and like you should just be quiet. Um, they make you feel like other people are better, bigger, more qualified, more interesting, worth more money than you are. They're wrong, but it's easy for me to tell you that. So I'm gonna tell you about my monsters first. These are my monsters. The you can't do it monster lives at the bottom of my left pant leg and he's cute. So you kind of think like, he's not that scary. He wears overalls and a striped shirt. He's got blue, blue curly hair. And he tugs on my pant leg when I'm trying to do something new, when I'm trying to step out of my comfort zone. And he says, you can do it. Kind of like the kid in uh, a league of their own who used to heckle from the sidelines of the baseball game. And that's the monster that keeps me the smallest. 
and tells me that I can't do things. I can't do big things. I can't do important things. I can't do impactful things. So that's monster number one. Monster number two is the it has to be perfect monster. If you're a perfectionist out there, make me feel better. Tell me you're a perfectionist in the chat. <laughs> the it has to be perfect monster is all or nothing. My it has to be perfect monster will not send a thing out until it is absolutely perfect, which doesn't exist. So it takes all of this extra time to do things. And sometimes I just don't do them because I don't think they're gonna be perfect. Next is the, they're out to get you monster. This is like a little old lady in a rocking chair sitting in my brain, deciding for me that everybody's trying to trick me, that there, there is no actual job for me. There are no actual clients for me. And, uh, and they're all out to get me. They're all out to trick me into doing things I don't want to do and steal my money and get away with things. And my last monster is the, oh, you got lucky monster, right? And that's the monster that a lot of us feel when we're looking for another job. We think, oh, I'm making 50, 150, $250,000. I have this manager, director, VP title. And I just got lucky. I just, I don't know why they put me in this position. Maybe there was nobody else. Maybe they thought I would sue them if I didn't get what I'm asking for. I don't know, but I just got lucky and it's not going to happen again. I'm not going to get it somewhere else. So these are my monsters. And if I functioned on a regular basis, letting these monsters run the show, they would win. And I would sit quietly in my apartment wondering what I might do with my life and how I might make some money. So I want to know about your monsters. We're going to go back to the whiteboard and the chat. And I'm going to ask you, you don't have to identify your monsters by name. That's, that's a whole process. I went through a whole thing. <laughs> but tell me in the chat and on the whiteboard, what do your monsters tell you? These are awesome. Thank you for being willing to share all of this. This is scary stuff to say out loud. And know that when you're being brave enough to share it out loud, other people in the room are grateful that you are. We're gonna give it another 30 seconds. And Ellie, I've got the chat up now, so. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Cool, okay. So my gosh, the number of comments and whiteboard comments, I'm just, I'm blown away. Thank you for all of this insight. Not good enough. Other people are more qualified. Not good enough. Not smart enough. Not young enough. You don't have the experience to ask for that much money. Can you really do that? It's too hard. It has to be perfect. It always has to be perfect. You're not smart enough. You're comfortable where you are. Just stay there. You won't find something better. 
that will pay you well. You don't have anything valuable to add. Don't waste my time. This is comfortable. That might not be whatever is next. I don't have time. People will not recognize my skills as worthy and pay me. You're out of practice. You've been out of the search game for too long. You're not qualified. You don't have anything valuable to add. Awesome. Let's see, we've got some more in the chat here. I made the wrong decisions and it's too late to change. I won't be able to juggle anything as before, everything as before. Don't give up what you have. I was lucky. I can't do it. I don't know how to work a real job. Everyone else has real qualifications and I'm faking it. Too late in your life to pivot and you're not qualified for anything else anyway. There are only so many personality types. So you're going to get the same person in a different form wherever you go. You won't get a shot at a new role without experience in that field. Whether I can do it, my skills and experience are only applicable for a narrow range of new jobs. Amazing. Look at how relatable you all are to each other. The difference between you and the people who are searching for and getting new jobs right now is that they're learning to quiet their monsters. I learned to quiet my monsters. And when my, this is the best it'll ever be monster, which wasn't one that went up on the board, <laughs> but I have them. Um, when that monster spoke loudly, I was working 80 to 100 hours a week. I was interim managing uh, the finance team while I was hiring a VP of finance, a million dollar construction project at the beginning of the pandemic, plus my HR job, plus I managed the meetings and conference department. I'm not sure why I got that, but I did. And I managed IT and admin and a couple of other things. And I thought, at least if I need a dentist appointment, nobody's going to bug me about taking time off for it because my monsters got so loud that I should be there doing that for the rest of my life, that I was lucky to be in that job, that I was lucky to be a vice president, that I was lucky to be in a leadership position with an ethical nonprofit. And I shouldn't rock the boat because the people I didn't like here, don't tell anybody I didn't like them there. I liked everybody. I liked everybody. But the people I liked, I didn't like there, I thought, well, they're going to be everywhere. I'm not escaping anything. I'm not escaping anyone. And I was fortunate that I didn't want to escape my own boss in that job. I have been in jobs like that. Um, and so I thought, I'm lucky. I've got everything except joy. I didn't have any joy. And so um, let me close the whiteboard and just talk to you for a couple of minutes. Um, and so what I had to figure out was how to quiet my monsters and how to allow my actual skills, abilities, and interests to come through and to be able to be the louder part of my life. Now, can you pay someone to write your resume for you? Sure. Can you go to a job search class and learn how to job search and learn how to use LinkedIn for network? Absolutely. And do I work with my clients on that? Sometimes when we get there. But the real work is before you start searching so that you can figure out who you are, what your value is, and what your values are, two different things, so that you can create a powerful job search for yourself. So that you're not looking at other jobs and saying, well, I make $80,000 here, but I'm willing to go down to 60 for the right job. No. That's not where we want you. We want you to feel super confident in who you are, in what your value is, and in what you want. This is not just about going after a job. This is also about finding the place where you belong. So I've got great news for you. Your monsters are wrong. And the, the learning the opportunity is to understand why your monsters are telling you what they're telling you, to decide what you want to believe, what you don't want to believe, to discern fact from the stories we make up in our heads about who we are and what's wrong with us, and to step into our power, right? So, so let's talk about the monsters because the monsters are actually good monsters. They're trying to protect you. That's their goal. 
their goal is to protect you. And so they are telling you, you are not good enough. And so they are telling you, you can't get a bigger, better, different job. And so they are telling you, you cannot make more money. I know it doesn't make any sense because if your monsters loved you, like, wouldn't they want better for you? Wouldn't they want bigger, better, faster, more? Um, uh, if ever, if anybody was alive in the 1900s, you may remember that that is the title of the single album from Four Non Blondes, Bigger, Better, Faster, More. Um, if not, go listen to it. It's a good, like, early 90s listen. Um, here's what your monsters do for you. Your monsters live in your comfort zone. Your monsters want to keep you safe. They want to keep you comfortable. They are like a warm, cozy blanket on a cold winter morning. You're wrapped in that warm blanket. It feels so good. And the last thing that you want to do is shock yourself by taking the, the blanket off and feeling freezing and unsure, right? The downside of your monsters having you live in your comfort zone is that then you get stuck. You feel like you're not valuable because your monsters are saying, no, stay right here. Right here is safe and comfortable. This is the amount of money you're used to making. This is the level you're used to being in. This is what it's like to be a manager, but not a VP. I'm not ready to be a VP. So they make you feel like you're not valuable. They make you feel like you need to take a pay cut or a level cut or both if you're moving to a new job or a new industry. Oh, and forget it. If you've been laid off or fired, they just want you wrapped up in that warm blanket forever. They just don't want you to come out at all. So even your comfort zone becomes uncomfortable because you don't have all of the things, the job and the security and the paycheck, you don't have all of those things coming in anymore. So your monsters don't want you to move because they know what is happening right now. They understand and they know how it works. I have more great news for you. I know this looks like a template that I forgot to fill in, but I'm just repeating it. You are not your monsters. You're not your monsters. You are not your monsters. They don't own you. They are a part of you. They are there for a purpose to protect you, but you are not your monsters. You are your essence. You are your being. You are whatever is the most powerful about you when your monsters are not getting in the way. You're amazing. And I can say that about all of you in this room and all of you who are watching the recording after. You're amazing. And I know you're amazing because you care enough about yourself, about your future, about this topic to come here today and listen to this and hear it and stay even though it's uncomfortable, even though you had to say out loud, I don't think I'm good enough. Even though you typed in the chat, I'm never gonna make, I'm never gonna get hired somewhere else, right? You're a star. Your skills didn't magically only work for the company you were just working for or you currently work for. You didn't just get lucky. You are good at things. And if you just left a job where you were laid off and that took away your confidence that you're good at things, or where you were fired and that took away your confidence that you are good at things, what you need to know is that you're good at things. You're good at a lot of things. And you need to discover what those things are so that you can walk into a job search really confidently really knowing who you are and what is special about you. And that is the search. That's the search before the search is figuring out who you are, what you're good at, what your monetary value can be in the market, what you're not willing to give up on as you move. Your experience is transferable. Yes. Are there some exceptions? Sure. If you work in a garden center and you want to be uh, an astronaut, that experience is not transferable. Unless maybe you're like a botanist and you, you know, can go to the moon with plants. Maybe it is. I just talked myself out of it. You're, you're, it's all transferable. Um, no, there certainly are some specialties 
where you have to go back to school or you do have to start at a lower level. But in general, if you're switching from a manager position to a manager position, if you're switching from a manager to a director or to a VP, your experience is transferable. I have not run into a client yet in all of my years of coaching where they told me that there was something that they wanted to do. And I said, you can't because you can figure it out. And you have worth. You are worth the money you think you're worth. You are worth the title you think you're worth. You are worth the level that you think you're worth. All right, so some of you are like, yes, I hear all of this. Some of you are like, I don't hear any of this. I'm still feeling like I'm not good enough. And some of you are like, all right, Lauren, I get it. Now what? <laughs> right, let's sort it out. So for those of you who are feeling like, I get it, I'm in, let's sort it out. This part's gonna be nice and easy for you. For those of you who are in the other camps of the, I feel exactly the same way that I did when this conversation started, then you need to have a conversation with me. For those of you who are in the in-between and are saying, I get it, I hear it, but I don't know how to live it, that's what I work with clients on. I work with clients on getting from no boundaries, no confidence, uh, not knowing who or what they want to be when they grow up and helping them figure that out. And I work with people at the executive level. I work with emerging leaders. I work with individual contributors. Today, I'm going to help you start to sort it out. I'm going to have you walking away with some tools to start working it out. Okay. But I want you to remember as we go through these tools, I want you to remember that the value of the work you've done does not just disappear. You are not starting over. This is not starting from scratch. And you get to decide what's next. And in parentheses, I have sort of, right? Because you're applying to employers. So there is some lack of control, which makes those monsters come back out and say like, well, just sit down, like, just go sit down on the couch. It's time to binge watch something on Netflix. Um, you, you get to decide your part of what's next. What do you want your future to look like? And the better vision of your future that you can create, the better equipped you are to apply to those positions and get noticed and have a good cover letter. I know we all hate cover letters. I love cover letters. Sorry, I'm the outlier. But cover letters are such a great way to distinguish yourself. So is the professional summary or the executive summary at the top of your resume. Those are great distinguishers when you get to that point. But you can't get to that point and you can't speak confidently about yourself unless you get confident about yourself. So that's the what's next, okay? So there are several aspects of a job. I've picked eight. These are, these are my eight major ones that I kind of think everything fits into. And every time I show this chart, somebody's like, what about commute? Yeah, commute, maybe commute fits into environment. Maybe you got to force fit a couple of things, right? Um, but these are sort of the eight basics. So if you're sitting right now, if you're on your phone, take a screenshot with your phone. If you're on your computer, or your laptop, take a screenshot of this, because these are the eight aspects of a job that I want you to be evaluating before you even look for jobs. What kind of money do you want to make? Not what kind of money you want to settle for. Not what kind of money would you maybe accept if the job was great. I want you to dream here. And I say dream, but even your dreams are probably actually what's real and, and attainable for you. So aspects of a job, we look at money. What do you need your base salary to be? Are you a commission person? Are you a bonus person? Do you love equity? Do you care the most about your 401k? Those are all bits and pieces to think about. What are the kinds of hours that you like to work? Now, I told you I was an 80 to 100 hour work week person. For about two years, I actually really loved it because I was like so into the work um, uh, and I was so excited about the impact that I was making. It was not sustainable. It was not healthy. It did not actually work for me, but I was happy in it for a while. I'm actually happiest around 40 hours and that's what I do now, but I hadn't really thought about it. And so it's an important thing to think about is what is your 
where does your drive and your energy fit into the number of hours that you work? What kind of a boss do you want? I've interviewed people for 20 years in HR. You know, you get to hire, interview and hire bunches and bunches of people. And you expect everybody to say, I want a hands-off manager. I want a manager who doesn't, who just like lets me come and ask questions. But I have had people say, I want a manager who's willing to meet with me every day. So you get to think about what kind of boss do you want to work with? Who is that person? You, you might even describe that person like into the voice memo on your phone and, uh, and, then, and then take the notes about it and figure that out. What's the job you want? And this is a, um, this is a great, uh, I'm going to show you a, a tool on the next slide, but this is a great thing to look at um, is what is the job you want? What are, the, what are the things in the job that you want? What are things you don't ever want to do again? Then we're going to look at your coworkers. Are you on a big team? Do you work by yourself? Are you on Zoom meetings all the time? Are you on Teams? Are you slacking? Like, what, what does that look like with your coworkers? What is your environment? Are you working from home? Are you hybrid? Are you in the office? Are you in the field? Are you in a car all day? What makes you happy? What does your future look like? Are you going to your next job with the hope of getting promoted, with the hope of growing in, on, on a ladder? Or are you going to your next job as a stepping stone to the next next job? You may be a person who likes to switch jobs every so often, or you may be a person who's like, if I could just stay here for the next 22 years until I retire, that is what I would do. And what is the balance you're looking for? Do you want activities after work? Do you want... 37 and a half hours and everybody gets a half hour lunch and then you're done and you don't think about work? Do you want to take work home with you? Where does balance come in for you and what's important to you? Okay. In a few minutes, I'm going to start taking questions. So if you've got questions, go ahead and start putting those in the chat. I'm happy to answer those. Um, so I've created the fine as a trap inventory. So if you don't know me and this is your first interaction with me, my slogan is fine as a trap. And fine is where we settle to when we think we can't have more. So fine is this middle of our career place we get to where we think we've gotten the best we can get. And when we look at this inventory, what it helps us do is not find the job, right? We're doing the search before the search right now. What this helps us do is figure out what our priorities are. And this asks you the questions that are under money and hours and boss and job, et cetera. So if you go to findasatrap.com, there's no HTTP. It's a, it's a link that leads you to um, my website and nobody can spell Lefkowitz. So find as a trap was an easier URL to get. Um, but you can download that and just fill in the blanks. It takes like 10 or 15 minutes. And it really helps you evaluate where you are now what you like and what you don't like. I also have a podcast, which I'm really excited about. We just launched it with um, uh, my coaching partner, John Spears. Um, and uh, this is, it's called, I could talk to you all day. It is a real talk leadership podcast. It's not about statistics. It's not about philosophy or the psychology of, it is like the talking about today the not feeling good enough, the feeling like an imposter, all of that kind of stuff. Our episodes are like about 30 minutes or so. We've only released two episodes so far, but we're getting awesome feedback on it. And it's for you. It's like a conversation. It's not us talking at you. We're not having any guests right now. We're not trying to highlight other people. We're trying to highlight you. And our first um, episode actually was kind of hilarious because uh, we recorded an episode and both of us were super uncomfortable and felt like imposters and felt like we had no business <laughs> being podcasters. And so we, we recorded this really awkward episode that we didn't release. And then on our first actual episode, we talked about failing at the first episode. Um, and our second episode that we just released is about facts versus stories right? So all of this stuff that we've had on the whiteboard today has been our stories, the monsters. I'm not good enough. I can't do this. Nobody will hire me. The job search is too hard and too stressful. It's about understanding yourself, understanding your monsters, thanking them for their opinion and their time, and being able to discern fact from story, being able to figure out who you are 
who you want to be when you grow up and filling in that gap of how to get there. I've got all my information here um, and uh, um, we'll make sure to get it to you after the presentation as well. Um, but uh, the find is a trap inventory. Oh, I did put an HTTPS in there without even, uh, sorry, y'all, that's a, that's a bad link. Um, great, look how I can fix stuff right in the moment. Perfect. See, the, the perfectionist monster in me was like, you did this wrong. This whole presentation is worth nothing because you put an HTTPS at fine as a trap. <laughs> the higher power me knows that that's not true. Um, I'm super active on LinkedIn. I go live a bunch. I post almost every day. Um, I try to be relatable and interactive. Um, so do connect with me. I said it at the beginning and I'm gonna make sure I get a copy of the chat so I can connect with all of you, but um, do connect with me. Um, and uh, that second link there, the let's chat link is for a free strategy call. If you think that you might wanna do some work with me um, and figure out all this search before the search stuff, um, whether you're actually looking for a job or whether you just want to get confident and um, uh, and excited about who you are and and what you do and how you be, um, then uh, you know set up a time to chat with me. And uh, that's the show, folks. So I'm taking questions. Ellie, what do you have for me? Yes. Okay. Well, I just did want to do one more plug. Lauren is one of the fabulous coaches, part of our Coaches Corner program. So as she is part of that program, she does offer a discount to her services outside of kind of the, the consultation that she is offering for free, which is wonderful, but she does offer discounts for Terp. So definitely check her out. I'll put the Coach's Corner link in the chat. Um, I'll let some more questions trickle in, but one of the questions I had for you that I was thinking about, Lauren, kind of while you were talking was about the idea of potentially staying where you are is your model more on like we're not looking back we're only moving ahead or is there any space for you to kind of talk through are there you know is there any coaching that you could do for folks here that might say that I might still want to stay at this company are there things that I can do to potentially improve this situation to make this not just fine to improve the work-life balance or are you is your motto really just you know, you've been here for a while, it's time, it's time to look for further ahead. Yeah, awesome question, Ellie. Um, and super common question that I get because a lot of people assume that coaching is for job hunting. Um, and it 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 is, it's good for it's good for that and it can be really helpful with that. Um, my clients are a split. Some of my clients come to me and they say, I've got to get out of here, or I've been gotten out, right? I got quit or I've been let, laid off or I've been fired. Um, uh, and they, they want another job. And we almost never start with the actual job search. Although I do have one client right now who's in the middle of the job search and came to me realizing that she's not applying for the right level job. So, um, so there's, there's flex in sort of how we start. The mm -hmm. other faction of my clients are people who are like, I don't know if it's me or the job. Mm. And so I think I want to stay here. Everybody else is happy at this company. I don't know why I'm not happy at this company. Everybody else seems to have nights and weekends. I don't know why I don't have nights and weekends. Everybody else seems to get promoted. I don't know why I'm not getting promoted. Right. And one particular client is coming to mind who came to me saying, I need to leave here because this job is not doing it for me. And after us working together for several months, she realized she wasn't speaking up in meetings. She wasn't asking for what she needed. She was not telling her supervisor some of the things that were going on that should have been handled by her supervisor. Mm. And we got through those fears and she started speaking up for herself and she started getting really powerful about who she is and who she wants to be at work. And a year later, she's still at that job that she thought she had to leave. Yeah. Um, and another story is my own, which is that I thought I needed to leave my job in order to not work all of these hours. And when I started reflecting on it, I realized I had worked the same kind of way at the previous job and the same kind of way at the previous job. So the, the answer for me was wherever you go, there you are, right? I, everybody, there's a whole bunch of people that quote is attributed to, but mm -hmm. 
to take you with you wherever you go. So if you think the answer is the job, in some cases it is. In some cases, if your life is great and you're like, I'm just ready for something bigger and you go look for jobs, awesome. That's not what I saw in this room today. That's not what I am. That's not what my clients have been. It's it's this all this imposter syndrome and all of these concerns the first step is figuring out who you are and where you fit in your own life and in your own yeah. work. Yeah. And then deciding, well, what do I want now? Do I want to stay in this job and be successful at it and just be a great leader? Or do I want to go somewhere else and do something else? And either way, you're more empowered. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Um, well, we got a lot of other great questions coming in. So I want to make sure we get okay. to some of those too. Um, one of the questions from John, and I think this rings true for a couple of folks who have been messaging me, um, Shouldn't, and this is kind of the age old question, shouldn't I expect longer hours with a bigger role or salary? Like, I think a lot of people think that if you're in the corporate space, there's no way that you're only going to work 40 hours. What, what do you say to those folks? Maybe. <laughs> so I, that's an unsatisfying answer. I'm sorry. But um, that's why doing that inventory, whether you use my tool or whether you just use, you know, those eight things. That's why that's so important because if regular hours, if 40 hours a week is important to you, then when you go into interviews, you have the right and responsibility to say to the interviewer, um, hey, what, what's the culture like here? What is the work culture? You know, do people travel? Um, are there after hours events? Am I taking work home with me? Right. And you hear me say all of that with no energy. And everybody's afraid to say that because they don't want to sound like they don't want to work hard, right? Mm -hmm. um, where I worked, where I was working 80 to 100 hours a week, not everybody was doing that. Some mm -hmm. people were. Not all the executives were even doing it. Some people were. And so sometimes it's about you. Sometimes it's about the company culture. If you go for an interview and they're like, oh, we're work hard, play hard. I mean, I see that as a red flag. <laughs> I, you know, that's really like work hard, work hard, work hard, and then go out to happy hour with everybody get some sleep so you're not hung over in the morning and then work hard again. Um, uh, but there are ways to ask about that in the interview. There are ways to find out about that through your networking connections. That's why LinkedIn can be so important and so helpful. Um, when I left the corporate world to launch my business full-time, I had gone from 80 to 100 hours a week to 40 hours a week with a lot of work and a lot of coaching for me um, with no disruption in my company mm -hmm. uh, because I learned to set boundaries, because I learned to say no, because I learned to redirect work where, where it belonged instead of feeling bad that people were going to feel angry that I was giving them work. Um, and, and so the, the answer is it depends. There are some executives who work insane hours and there are some who work 40 hour work weeks and they're very happy with it. Yeah. And I, I think you touched on this a little bit, but we had another question coming in about how you can detect a toxic environment during the interview stage. I heard you say, you know, there's certain questions you can ask. You can utilize LinkedIn and maybe chat with some of the folks that already work there. Do you have any other ideas for folks during the interview process? Yeah. Um, go through your LinkedIn connections and see who you might be connected to at a company. Um, if you're newer on LinkedIn, look at who your connections connections are. So if you see your second connection to someone, if you see your second connection to someone I'm connected to, ask me to introduce you. Whether I know them or not, I'm fearless on LinkedIn. Not everybody is, but I'm fearless on LinkedIn. I'll introduce you to anybody. Um, but um, that's one way is to start talking to people who work there or, or who have worked there. Um, I, I have a grain of salt piece of advice, take it with a grain of salt, look at Glassdoor, look at Fishbowl, look at the other apps that are company review apps. When you see things consolidated together, like in a six month period, a whole bunch of people gave negative reviews, that's often an indicator that there was a layoff. And there's always bitterness when there's a layoff. I would be bitter if I got laid off. It doesn't mean the company is bad. So that's why I say, take it with a grain of salt. There may be a bad manager who gets a bunch of reviews, but the company is good. You can also ask questions in the interview. You, we, we're all afraid to ask too many questions in the interview because we, we sit in this pick me mentality when it's really a business meeting where you both mm -hmm. get to decide. Mm -hmm. yeah. I totally agree. Um, 
Another question that came in about advice you'd have for folks that are in their early to mid fifties that are looking to switch industries. Yeah. Um, there is nothing wrong with being in your early to mid fifties. It's not a, it's not, um, a disservice to you to be growing up. It's not, um, I, I know there are companies that discriminate based on age and that's terrible. More often I see candidates counting themselves out based on age. Well, I'm already X years old. Every new client I work with first tells me how old they are. I'm 46. If you wanted to know, I just, I, you know, I don't mind telling people my age. I career changed at officially at 44. Um, but I'd been side gigging and I, you know, I made it a bigger deal. I have, I work with people all the time who are in their forties, fifties, even sixties who want to move to a different industry. The industry shouldn't be your hindrance. It's how you highlight for yourself and how you get confident for yourself on what's transferable and how you highlight that in your resume. Your resume is not a list of everything you've ever done. It's a highlight of what you want to do and what you've already done that matches that. So I right. have clients who we only put 20% of their jobs on their resume because they want to do that 20% of the work all the time. Right. And Marketing. I would argue, yeah, with 50, you know, with 30 plus years of experience, you have a full resume that would look good yeah. at a lot of different places in a lot of different industries. Absolutely. And I know we're getting short on time, but I do have a couple more if you have time, Lauren. Um, we have someone on the call that wants to know, the, what's your first move or what's your next step after you resigned from a job? You were only there for a year. You, you know, like to your point, had no joy. We're working over 100 hours a week. What's kind of the first next step after that? Oh, my gosh. Go to the pool. <laughs> Just go to the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Like give yourself some grace, right? We feel, especially if you're coming off this adrenaline of a hundred hours a week, which, you know, I've been there when you're coming off this adrenaline ride that's been going on and on your body's all out of whack. And we don't pay a ton of attention to our bodies. Cause we're like, go, I have more things to do. Um, but let, let your body come to rest, mm -hmm. give, whether that's a week or a month or whatever you can afford, let your body come to rest, then do that inventory figure out what you want. And I'm guessing what you want, Richard, is not a hundred hours. What mm -hmm. you want is a supportive team environment. And you can have that, but you need to rest, which is hard for people who have the achievement level to stand a hundred hours for a year. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it sounds like that's such an important step in the process that a lot of folks on this call most likely wouldn't take because they're overachievers and they want to go to the next thing. So that's such a great point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just two more questions. At what point would you recommend someone seeks out a professional resume writer versus um, putting it together themselves? I feel like that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there are lots of people out there who call themselves professional resume writers because they think they're good writers and they're not. So I will caution you to like vet your resume writer, make sure that that's what they actually do for a living, that they've got some kind of qualifier, either they were recruiter, they were HR, um, they got a resume certification from a place that seems reputable. I think everybody should have a professional resume writer. If I needed to submit my resume for something important and I've been writing resumes for 20 years, I'd probably consult a resume writer because mm -hmm. it is very hard to write about yourself. Um, when you should seek out a professional resume writer, if you're not, you know, in the everybody category, which a lot of people aren't, most people don't actually go to a professional resume writer. If you're not in that category, you want to look at your resume and see if you're getting responses. If you're not getting responses when you apply for jobs, or if you're applying to same level jobs and you're getting like some same level um, stuff, but you want to be up leveling, the resume writer will help you learn to talk about yourself and will shift your assisted with to helping you realize, oh, I led that project and get you confident in sharing that you led it, not that you were, were an assistant. So you may be downplaying yourself. Yeah, yeah. that's really great um, feedback to that nugget about if you're putting your resume out and you're not hearing back, clearly something's not working on your 
on your resume potentially. Yeah. Um, okay. Last one. I want to make sure this one gets a little airtime. If you took a career break to raise children, how can you best present that and represent that in an interview? Um, uh, uh, my advice is a little unpopular. Um, just leave it out. Just, I, I don't think you have to explain it. I think, you know, if you're returning to the workforce now and you've been off for some time because you were raising your children, which is not being off, it's just being off from the, from the corporate work world or government or whatever, nonprofit, whatever you're in. Um, I think you just leave it blank. You answer it when it's asked about, um, but you are presenting a marketing document that you are a professional who has the, this experience doing this stuff in this order who you are at the top in a professional summary is super important. And then when you get asked, wait, what have you been doing since 2015? Stay home to raise my kids. And it's getting to that without energy, without apologizing. Oh, I stayed home to take care of my kids, Ugh, right? It's not an apology. It's that's what you decided to do with your life at that time. And you wanna be able to say it with as much energy as I had scrambled eggs for breakfast. And that's the confidence that employers are looking for. Mm -hmm. Leave no room for hesitation or question. I'm sure right. that's a tough skill to build. Well, yeah. Lauren, I appreciate all of your expertise and thank you to the audience for all these amazing questions. I feel like we, we really got some you know, good conversation going throughout the entire presentation and definitely at the end. So lots of thank yous coming in through the chat. So huge thank you again, Lauren. I'll be sure to pass along the recording of this webinar. I'll share all of the links for ways that you can contact Lauren in the future. Um, and I'll send that to the email that you use to register for this event. So huge thank you, virtual round of applause for Lauren. And um, do you wanna close us with a go Terps, Lauren? I usually let our presenter do that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I don't think I've said that in 25 years, but yes, go Terps. Woohoo. Go oh. Terps. Thanks everyone. See you next time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Ellie. Bye. Thank you.